Hi, this is Edmund West saying Merry Christmas to YouTube. It's almost over. I had a brilliant day. One of the presents I got was this gigantic sensory toy. It smells gorgeous. I got five different flavours of coffee. More sensory delight. <clears throat> so, talking of sensory delight, today I'm going to talk about gothic culture. Not something I've talked about before because I've wanted to concentrate on serious issues like politics, economics, disability, history. But because it's Christmas, I think I can be lighthearted. Now, I want to talk about the great contradiction in Gothic culture. Since the 18th century, Gothic culture has been obsessed with death and darkness. I share this fascination, although. I must admit there is one bit of gothic culture I do not like, and that's the fact that a lot of them believe in vampires and elves and spirits, etc., and crystals healing you. <laughs> Yuck! Uh, uh, I can't say I ever believe in them. I love looking at pictures of these fictional beings. I love reading about them, but it's fiction, not fact. Okay, the contradiction is that medieval Gothic culture was the exact opposite, which I realised after visiting Saint Chapelle last month, right in the middle of Paris. It's one giant reliquary. It's not really a church. It's done by I think Louis the Ninth. I'm not too sure about that. I'll check up on that. Uh, who built it to house a crown of thorns he bought from the Byzantine Emperor. But although it's it's the purest example of Gothic architecture because it's all one architect, because it was built quick, because it was small, but because it was a royal chapel, holy chapel, it's got tallest stained glass windows and magnificent purple colour. Unbelievable. And everything is painted, unlike English churches where the paintings have been scrubbed out. And it's just full of colour. They were obsessed with producing bright colours. I don't know if you can see that properly, but that's how tall the windows were. You can't really see the colour on the frame. Anyway, brilliant purple. And as I say, every inch painted in very light colours. Can you see that? No, not really. Ah, yes, you can just see that pillar there. That's how brightly coloured it was. Beautiful. So why is there this contradiction? Because medieval Gothic buildings were obsessed with Brilliant colour. Nothing about darkness. There's only one thing that unites medieval Gothic culture and modern Gothic culture. Oops. Sorry, that was my laptop. Let me just show you. These fellas. Gargoyles from the French word gargui, which is, comes from the word gargle, so it's on a map of it. One of my, my favourite groups of words. So, gargoyles are all that unite medieval gothic culture with modern gothic obsession with death. And of course, they weren't there because they were worshipping monsters. They may have had pagan origins, I'm sure they did, but they certainly weren't <laughs> conceived as such by the Catholic Church. No, they were meant to scare off demons, effectively. Um, by the way, uh, I should have pointed out that was a great test. That was a bit of a useless. <laughs> yeah, gargoyles, they have to have walks coming up, you don't know. <laughs> Never in 
<laughs> For those of you interested in gothic culture, a warning, gothic culture is like the culture of insects and spiders. It's matriarchal. Beyond belief. <laughs> Most, I'd say, about half of the women are bisexual, and there's a tendency of gothic men. I mean, this isn't all of them, but there is a very high tendency to be towards being submissive, and uh, a lot of pseudo masochism. But I don't need to tell you that. But they've already got a reputation for that. <laughs> They do deserve that, although they don't deserve their respect in the whole that much. They're some of the most chilled out groups you can get amongst teenagers. But very matriarchal, without a doubt. Good and bad things about that, but it's in terms of suffering. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks to all my family for giving me lovely Christmas presents. Um, I hope everyone, uh, all my viewers, had a lovely Christmas too. Or you decided that to say the Let's keep it nice and pagan. Uh, I hope next Christmas the Thames Cruise is over and we can have a giant cross fair instead of it being family centric. Just have a whole community pile in with uh, more spontaneity and a little less tradition, perhaps. Anyway, nice everyone.